That's ironic. We did that last episode. What's well, going on, my fellow gamers? Welcome, welcome back to the game. Here, welcome back to Kingdom Come Deliverance. Last time we thought Henry had a late read in this new town, and Ginger, Ginger went us in this direction, and he's alive. So that's good. But what do we do? Hi, villager. Greetings. What do you need? You need a wash. I come in the name of Sir Hanish of Lyper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? I don't know how I can help you, but ask if you must. Who was this Lubosh who was murdered? You could see at first glance he was no good. I kept well out of his way. I didn't help. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? There wasn't sight or sound of him for a long time, and then yesterday... He turned up at the church and even talked to the parish priest. I never saw him do that before. Probably had a bad conscience. Oh? You know what? Forget that. We're going to talk to the priest. Thank you. God bless. The priest? Why would a... Uh... Oh, wait. We're talking about 15th century Bohemia. Before they said, I don't know. I and where you just pay money and be good. So rub a lot of people and pay it off and you're money. Sure, it Church was such a scam back here. Holy cow. Alright, so. Why on earth we talk? Want to go, mate? I see you know how to wield a sword, father. I wouldn't have expected that from a man of the cloth. With a stick. I practice with a stick. It's a reminder of my youth and days gone by, and it helps keep me in good form. The blessings of our good lord be with you, father. I'm here in the name of Sir Hanish of Lyper, investigating the massacre at Neuhof, which seems to be connected to a murder here. Can I ask you a few questions? It seems Sir Hanush is employing children as investigators. But ask as you wish, boy. I hope this nasty business will be cleared up quickly. Did you know Lubosh? What was he like? A bit of a lost soul. Simple, rough fellow, but at heart I don't think he was such a bad person. Did you notice anything suspicious recently? My child, all sorts of suspicious things have been going on recently. People like Lubosh don't know what to do about it, and sometimes they do stupid things. That's really not a lot of help to me, Father. I'm sorry to hear that. <gasps> do you know what Lubosch was doing on the day Neuhoff was raided? Unfortunately, I do know. And I'd like to help you with your investigation, but I can't. What? What? <gasps> I'm bound by certain vows that forbid me to tell you. Vows more important than catching dangerous murderers? There are laws of God above the laws of man, son. And one of those is the sanctity of the confessional. Father, surely you can't be serious. There must be situations in which you can make an exception. There are things that apply always, no matter what the circumstances. And this is one of them. Alright, so... I think the only option I have that had a chance is threatening him, and I won't probably won't do anything. I've got no time for this. You might be happy to put people's lives at risk, but I refuse to, and I'll get that confession out of you by force if I have to. <laughs> You're threatening me. You want to fight me? Well, I never. Well, why not? Let's have at it. What? All right, let's do it. You want to fight? Take care now. <laughs> you can fight. <laughs> Dude, I am fighting a preacher because game logic. Talk now. Well, that 
have to admit you're good. Or I'm getting too old for this. What? Either way, you think you'll get confessional secrets out of me with your fists? You're badly mistaken, boy. You can hammer me to death if you like, but the sanctity of the confession is unbreakable. I do want to help you, though. So come to the tavern in the evening, and maybe we'll come up with something. What? Wait, he respects... Okay, that's not what I expected. This is such a weird... I like this preacher guy. Don't get me wrong. I'm Mr. Innkeeper. Good day to you. What do you need? Place to sleep. Is there somewhere I could sleep here? Aye, there's room here. For how long? Forever. Just the one night. Sure, but let's see your coin first. These are harsh times. Two? Okay. There you go. It's not even worth haggling. You all like it here. Like sleeping on a cloud it is. Where do I go to sleep? You'll have no trouble finding it. Right inside the door to the building, there's a ladder up to the loft. Your bed's ready there, and a trunk for your belongings. Alright, that's easy to do. Be with you. So, right. There's no ladder here. Here. Ah, he said right. So, what are we doing? We're actually going to go ahead and press that punch off in the face. Bruh. I'm sorry I can't tell you everything, but maybe we can work something out. I've only got but first, I'd like to hear something about you, my son. With whom do I have the honor? Where are you from? I'm from Scarlet's. Oh, I'm sorry. What about your kin? They're dead. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Here, we'll drink to them. It must have been terrible. It was terrible. It seemed so pointless. He had no warning. He just appeared and began the slaughter. God knows why. They killed anyone who didn't make it to the shelter of the castle. My parents, my girl, even the Deutsch who was on Sigismund's side. I didn't make it to the castle. I wanted to try and help my parents, but there was nothing I could do. Then I fled to Taunberg with the Cumans on my heels. They almost killed me. They slaughtered people in the surrounding villages. There was a pile of bodies in front of the church in Rovna. Folk who tried to take refuge there, but they... My poor child. May God grant them eternal rest. And how did you come to get this assignment? I'd have expected Sir Hanish to send that old grouch, Bernard. He did, but I found a witness and the trail led here to Ujitz, so he sent me here to follow it up. Ah, well congratulations. It's nice to see someone using their head to find things out instead of torture. We'll have to drink to that. Now the most important thing. What actually happened at Noyo? The good folks here about are saying all kinds of terrible things, but I take most of it with a pinch of salt. The rumors aren't exaggerated this time, unfortunately. The Neuhof stud farm was raided by bandits, but they didn't come to pillage or even take the horses. They only wanted to kill. They maimed the horses and slaughtered some people. I'm sure they would have killed more, but the bandits quarreled among themselves and broke off the attack. And judging by what's left of our Lubosch, they're still settling accounts. I see it's every bit as bad as people claim. Dreadful. Well then, here's to those poor souls who had to die so pointlessly and so terribly. 
I've told you all about me. Now it's your turn, Father. You don't look much like our parish priest at home. I noticed you're pretty handy with a sword. I wouldn't expect that of a man of the cloth. You know what they say. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. But this is a bit more mysterious than others. Let's just say I haven't always been a priest. Fate led me to places where affairs were settled by force. These days, of course, it's just a bit of exercise to keep me in shape. Well, we've had an agreeable chat, but now let's get down to business. So, about this confessional seal. Do you really want more innocent people to die? Henry, that's not how it works. There are matters in which you can't make exceptions, because if you do it once, you'll forever be tempted to do it again. If people stop believing in the church because their confessional secrets are betrayed, they won't trust anyone, and that's worse than even the most hideous crime. Bottom top bail for me. They reach a dead end. I understand, but that means I've reached a dead end. Those cutthroats will strike again, and I can't stop them. Chin up, lad. I might have a solution. What? If I tell you what Lubos told me, I'd be betraying the confessional secret. But... First thing tomorrow, I'll try something I think might help you. Word of honor? On my soul. I always wondered about the things a priest tells his congregation. Where else do you get the ideas for your sermons? Well, Ujit isn't fraud. It's not enough to instruct people. They have to be entertained, too. If I only read from the Bible, I'd soon be preaching to an empty church. Our priest wasn't exactly a bard. So what do you preach to your flock about? Yeah. It has to be something topical. Condemning vices. And of course, describing them in detail. A tongue lashing about the two popes goes down well these days. And stories from real life, with a nice moral to them, are popular as well. Especially if they're about fornication and similar scandalous vices. Can you give me an example? Well, recently a priest by the name of Jan Hus started preaching in Prague, in the Czech language, and the people liked it. I hear he always has a full house. The journeyman who heard him told me what Hoos is preaching, and I like the sound of it. I'm thinking about putting it in my own repertoire. What's so amazing about it? The preaching of Master Jan Hoos about Mother Church. The lamentable wealth in which the church is drowning has turned to poison, and nearly the whole of Christendom is contaminated. Just like a flock of hungry ravens, they settled on this land to devour every grain of gold and silver. They know no mercy. Their hearts are corrupted by longing for wealth. And they shamelessly profit from everything. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. What if the devil himself were to pay? Would he ascend to heaven too? With such money gained from the poor they buy beautiful horses to ride and needless servants to pamper them. They gamble at dice and dress their whores in expensive furs. While Jesus Christ walked barefoot and had no place to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Amen. Well, this Jan Hus character is quite a rebel. Oh, the congregation will love it. I don't doubt it. Let's drink to that. <laughs> Funny. That last bit reminds me of someone. What do you mean? My situation's all completely right, different. Right. Hooth preaches against the prelates and the clerics who are robbing the poor. Look at me. I don't have a pot to piss in. I'm no better off than the folk I preach to. I'm one with them in poverty and suffering and everything that troubles them. I drink with them and curse those stuffed habits in Sassau Monastery. All right. What the... Um, I feel like I, I should have... I kind of hinted at this, that part of this conversation wouldn't lead this pathway because Catholicism was so messed up during this time, and then Jan Hus, which actually started the Hussite Rebellion for Bohemia, which caused a lot of problems. Don't you think it's a bit odd when someone boozes and lives in sin with a woman and then criticizes the Pope for, be, for debauchery? No, I don't. Uh, okay. What do you think of this, Jan Hus? 
He's certainly a wise man. A little overzealous for my taste. If he got out of Prague and came here for a look, I'm sure he'd stop condemning drinking and lying with women. Fair enough. Oh, Where can I find out more about his teaching? Do you like it? I copied down some of his sermons. If you're interested, you can read them at my presbytery. Keep that in mind. What do the common folk think of it? They like it. They're happy to hear someone say what they think themselves, but are afraid to say aloud. Things that make them angry. And they're calling for change. In a few years, it'll have grown beyond control. You mark my words, the people will rise up and the church will be shaken to its very foundation. Yeah, unless they burn him at the stake first. Nonsense. They can't burn a master of the most respected university in Europe. That's fair. Thanks for the sermon, but I think I've been morally uplifted enough. Oh, it's getting quite late. What are your plans, Father? What do you suppose? We have a drink, of course. <laughs> Good point, I like. Ah, that sounds like a good plan. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Hey.